All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Over, Over the Garden, Garden Wall, Wall, episode one. one. Wait, that animated show that not enough people have heard about that or uh, seen or seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that Elijah Wood is in. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, the Frodo himself. The 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 fantasy maybe story of right. something that I can't tell if it's more on the like children's side or the darker side or mm -hmm. both or just the fantastical whimsical side. Uh, who's to say? But this is a show that comes highly recommended a mm -hmm. long time ago, before Castlevania. We did a poll to see what would be the Western animated shows that y'all would like us to see at some point, because it was like, hey, they're pretty good, and you should check them out. And yeah, then we yeah. were like, yeah, we want to watch Castlevania especially, mm -hmm. so let's, yes, indeed. Let's, let's see if that ends up being the top. What do you know? It was. Well, this show was also pretty high at the top, but it's also exceptionally short, so we were like, right. let's, let's do this one next. Because Western animated shows can get... Pretty ridiculously long. long and even yeah. though you might want us to watch Futurama um, <laughs> Futurama <clears throat> has like 200 episodes or exactly something that's so it's not the, very doable it's yeah, yeah it's not as reasonable mm -hmm. but but uh, 10 episodes also these episodes are 11 minutes long each could create an interesting type of discussion format where yeah. we focus very little on going into like like the individual like meat of the episode and kind of on the show as a whole but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see little bite-sized we'll chunks of fun yeah. yeah yeah but uh this is what we'll be doing uh mm -hmm. for the next 10 weeks then um we'll be going through each episode uh one episode at a time 11 minutes mm -hmm. each and um uh kind of uh just you know seeing what this is and then just doing another show directly after it yep. uh, that was on the poll but uh yeah yeah appreciate you guys uh doing the uh uh, well, showing so much support to Castlevania and stuff like that, but it's now time to switch up the, uh, the style and uh, piece of things here. So, y'all, yes. without further ado, let's get into this. Cold through the mist. Oh, ooh. yeah. By the milk light of moon, all that was lost. Whoa. But where have we come, and where shall we end? Mm. In dream. I'm loving the number of animals in this. Yeah. Mm. Now the gentle wind beckons through the leaves. Mm. Somewhere That's... lost in the clouded annals of history lies a place that few have seen. A mysterious place called the unknown where long-forgotten stories are revealed to those who travel through the wood. But I think the very worst name for this frog is... Wait, wait a second. Uh, <laughs> it's like a wood. <laughs> where are we? In the woods? I mean, <laughs> what are we doing out here? We're walking home. Greg, I think we're lost. We should we should have left a trail or something. I can leave a trail of candy for my pants. <sighs> no. <gasps> Do you hear that? Yeah. He wants to be lost. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's some kind of deranged lunatic with an axe waiting out there in the darkness for innocent victims? Greg! Greg! <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you're gonna get us I mean, in trouble again. He has a teapot <gasps> on his head. Yep. Ah! You, you might have actually been right. We should ask him for help. No, we should not ask him for help. <laughs> You shush. You shush. <laughs> Maybe I can help you. I mean, you guys are lost, right? Oh, okay. Talking animals. <laughs> yep. What in the world is going on? Well, you're slapping yourself, and I'm answering your question, and... No, Greg. A, a bird's brain isn't big enough for cognizant speech. Hey, what was that? What are you doing here? Explain yourselves. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Wow. Oh, calm down, mister. Well, whatever you do here is your business. These woods are no place for children. Don't you know the beast is a foot here? Uh -oh. The beast? We, we, we don't know anything about that. We, we're just... It's an actual foot. Yeah, oh, right. Well, welcome to the unknown, boys. You're more lost than you realize. Oh, oh, oh. I love this guy's voice. Everyone has a torch to burn, and this here is mine. Mm. I grind the horrid Hagelwood trees into oil to keep this lantern lit. This is my lot in life. This is my burden. Maybe we should make a break for it, if we can. But he must know the woods really well, so we may need to knock him out first. Except that may turn out really badly, huh? Yeah, bad, bad plan. I, forget it. Bad. I love Elijah Woods, just neuroticism. It's yeah. great. Leave, if you wish. But remember, 
The beast haunts these woods ever singing his mournful melody in the search of lost souls such as yourselves. Further and further, drifting away from where I want to be, who I want to be. <laughs> Crippling existential oh, dread. Know. Did you know that if you soak a raisin in grape juice, it turns into a grape? It's a rock fact. I love the grainy, almost film-like stuff of like the background. Yeah. Frog's giving me the run around. Okay, so he was telling the truth about the oil. Uh huh. Hmm. It's mimicking the. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh god. Okay. What? Oh, he's not gonna see it. Oh my god. <laughs> What's happening? Where's your brother? Hey, what? Holy holy. Pot dog. Oh my god. Spank. Spank. Run, 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 run. Candy camouflage. <laughs> You let the beast right to us with your candy. But he just wants candy. He, he yeah, can yeah. be a friend. Oh, oh okay, that's... Mm. Uh, Greg, give him the rest of your candy. No. Wow. No. Oops. There we go. Oh my god. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh, the little turtle at the beginning. The mill is destroyed. The oil, all gone. But, but, but look, we we got the beast problem solved. The dog, that is not the beast. And he'll ruin the, the, the. You're always messing up, Greg. Boy, you have it backwards. You are the elder child. You are responsible <laughs> for you and your brother's actions. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. One last thing. Beware the unknown. Fear the beast. Mm. And leave these woods. Mm. If you can. Mm. And little one. I'm starting to see the symbolism here. Frog, <laughs> give him a proper name. <laughs> okay. So which of those names that were horrible is he going to choose? Right. <laughs> I'm going to call him Wart. That's going to be Wart. really confusing. No, I'm going to call you Kitty. What? Maybe I'll start calling you Candy Pants. Whoa, yeah! <laughs> Good one, Wirt. Thanks. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Wirt. Hmm. That was great. Cool. That was adorable. Yeah, that, that was that was that was wonderful. Well, okay. Oh, this is that was, a, that was a fun first episode. This is reminding me how much I, I wish we had done Gravity Falls reactions. Uh huh. But yeah, it's fine because this, in some ways, is scratching that same it little really does fantastical that itch, itch yeah. because it's instead of the chipper, like kind of high energy attitude that Gravity Falls was. This is more like a bit like uh, nervous, and yet well, Gregory and, yeah, carries that Mabel energy. Just Gregory so carries well. the Mabel energy, and Wirt is totally like the neurotic main character. That's you know more like archetype wise, they're yeah, very similar. Yeah, archetype very similar. Mm -hmm. So so I love it. Love the, it. the voices are delightful. The voices are amazing. Like, like it's, yeah. In a in a show like this, the voices carry so much of like the personality yeah. and and all of that stuff, and so it's 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 fantastic. Like, yeah, Elijah I, I love, Woods killing it. Elijah um, Woods killing it. Christopher Lloyd as the, the woodsman was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I I have I have D and D NPCs that are already getting that voice oh, in I'm my a, head right wait, now. I'm N like and NPCs. Whoa. Yeah. Why not PC? Well, that's that that voice would annoy the shit out of my. What, like, what are you talking about? No, you have to slur it. What's the what's the while? Can you imagine how much longer everything would take just for you to talk like that as a PC? You're, you're the but, wizard that's like, no, I have plenty. But but okay, this forest mm -hmm. and its inhabitants are not what they seem. Exactly. There's a couple things at play here that are really cool that mm -hmm. the story is immediately drip feeding to us yep. with very, very quick little instances of, 
hey, are you paying attention? Uh -huh. Because things are happening here. One, we don't know how they got here. Nope. This is a framing in terms of storytelling that can make people go, wait a minute, or they just immediately just kind of forget about that and move on. And there's two very powerful things that can come about from that. One, you can have that be a point of plot relevance later when they sure. think about how did they get here? Because the main character, Wirt, or one of them in this case, because mm -hmm. Wirt and Gregory are essentially co-main Wait, are you characters. talking about the frog, or are you talking about... No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Said, wait, how did we get here? He had basically a moment of clarity. Right, of it's like, the, we got lost. Oh, hang on a second, what's happening? Right. And another thing that's very important to note is that um, they're not used to seeing birds that can talk. Well, well okay, hold on. I, I wanted to finish this okay. whole thing about the framing device of the, the story thing here. Okay, the, go for it. Think about that. What's the other reason that you basically just drop us into the middle of the story that from a framing device makes uh, people go 11 oh, episode yeah. 11 minute episode save time. Yes. They, but, the, but the other thing from mm -hmm. a fantastical sense is that you get people to basically question what this place is. Okay. This place is something that somehow almost feels like it itself pulled them here. It's not just a we decided to go here because right. we didn't see the choices that led them to come here. Well, yeah, so and, it makes and this place feel more eerie. And... Well, but that's that's why I was going to the whole bird thing because it's okay. this place is supernatural, has the opportunity for supernatural, or at the very least, weirdness that is different from the lives that they lead. Even right. though they themselves are kind of weird as people and as characters, yes. right? Yes. They were like, "What the fuck? There's a there's a talking bird like that's right. that's not normal. This you is know? not a supernatural world according to exactly. their experiences." Yes. yes. So so yeah. now they're they're in they're in the other space, right? Mm -hmm. They are in this other weird place where the unknown. weird stuff's going to happen, the unknown. Mm -hmm. And so now, who knows what happens? But the the story can do kind of whatever it wants, and these characters will have to deal with it as they try and make their way back home. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And first things first, the characters are lovely mm -hmm. but having them go through a mini kind of almost you know surprise monster kind of plot for the first episode gets us a nice kind of understanding of what type of show this is if there's going to be supernatural monsters or something in mm -hmm. this world we can't immediately assume that they're supernatural something yep. was going on that's weird and supernatural maybe by the standpoint of the fact that the dog literally transformed but again this, this whole setup here is one based on the idea that they're just suddenly here and yeah. they're getting a little bit scared and stuff. So maybe maybe the dog's frightening form well, was one they a little bit, you know, imagined right. in their minds. They, they, they imagined it a little bit. It's it's covered in oil, so then it's, you know, all dark and scary and all that stuff. But then also, mm -hmm. its eyes looking weird. That could be the whole, like, oil slick reflection, you know, type stuff. So, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, um... The woodsman was a great, like, kind of red herring for this mm -hmm. whole thing. Right. Was, oh, yeah, the crazy man with the axe, you know. Yeah, he was not even really, like, uh, uh, really particularly helpful in the, like, terms of world building and stuff. He gave, nope. like, a minor bit of, like, fear the unknown and the right, beast right. and all. And, and uh, giving a little bit of exposition and then thematic relevance, kind mm -hmm. of, with the things are not necessarily what they seem. Just because he looks scary, he's actually, like, he's all right. He, you know? Yeah, he's... he's Pretty normal and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, he was brought into the story immediately after um, Wirt imagined it. Oh, hmm. So I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna throw out I'm gonna throw out like three things involved here that are like, rather interesting. One, the framing device of thus being just thrown into the story immediately here after we got a montage of sorts of kind of like a an opening intro thing. Right. But also the idea that this world has potentially a supernatural element that's not um being presented as it really is from the from the from the okay. outset mm -hmm. which immediately makes me think of because this is where i'm at with a couple other stories right now so i need to pull myself yeah. a little bit out of it right. but that these boys might literally be dead this might literally be like a form of something where they're they're experiencing some kind of interstice between life and death and this right. is this is just they were on forest walk 815 and then suddenly it just you know or, or i mean but, but really but really this is something where a lot of what's going on here doesn't make sense from the like oh right exactly even typical the, there is no supernatural stuff right there's there's a level of weirdness that's happening uh -huh. that we that is part of what makes it uh, extra fun and give it more personality and everything, but at the same time, is it potentially plot relevant? The fact that, for instance, Gregory goes around with a tea kettle on his head, mm -hmm. 
that's they don't bat an eye at that Nothing. right the, the the characters see that it's never even mentioned right mm -hmm. to us the audience that's pretty weird that's pretty unusual and yet these are supposed to be the normal characters for the most right. part in this story you know so who knows what kind of life they they came from or anything like that yeah we haven't even seen a garden wall yet, really. Yeah. Like, like, like they, they kind of had something with the two, like, adults. Right, there was maybe, a wall that, like, maybe that could be the garden wall, and it's, like, those the were their parents, gonna and they, and like, stuff, yeah. yeah, like, they, this is because they went over the garden wall when they weren't supposed to. Like, I was kind of expecting to see something like that, yeah. where if, if there were to be some kind of fantastical thing like this, mm -hmm. that that would more come after it's the, oh, right. we went somewhere we weren't supposed right. to, and now we stumbled into this you know, crazy place, but instead they kind of just started with them having already stumbled into it, which mm -hmm. is probably a good, like, idea for time, you know, for the short episodes and everything. Yeah, but, I, I'm, st I'm still not sure whether or not this is something that only intended to have uh, 10 episodes or not, and oh, whether it got, you know, canceled or something like that. Sure. Because it is a bit of a, it is a bit of a hard sell, I would say, for, for a kid's show already at this point. Yes. Like, I feel like it's more geared towards a bit of an older audience. Yeah, like artsy project kind of a thing. Yeah, but then it's also something where the, the comedy is is one where it'd be a little bit hard to hit. So mm -hmm. um, that's also that. But you wanted to talk about the bird, and I wanted to talk about the bird. So let's talk about the let's bird. Let's talk about the bird. So... Okay, talking bird, cool. That, you know, it was fun and him and uh, work being like, wait, how does this work? Birds aren't supposed to have like brains big enough for like, you know, human speech and things like that. And the bird's like, like, what? <laughs> what? Excuse me? Yeah. But then it's just sort of like, it's it's done and it's over with. And it's like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's the first like truly not possible abnormal mm -hmm. thing that we yeah. that we saw this episode right the we, dog could be explained away a, a little bit as right. not necessarily being supernatural exactly but then we also had bits that were very like ominously given focus mm -hmm. of the bird before they actually talked to the bird it was just, watching them just watching the them from the shadows yeah. and then later at the when, end of the episode after it's the whole you know don't trust anything and all of that stuff mm -hmm. and they're like oh okay the bird is watching them again Mm -hmm. what's up with that? Like, that gives me huge, like, shape-shifting evil monster kind of vibes. And, and that's the thing. It could be literally that. Mm -hmm. And also it could be the, no, the audience is now being tricked because we've had our main characters been told, fear the unknown. Right. And we're yeah. now fearing anything that we don't fully understand. Even though so, maybe we shouldn't fully trust the woodsman anyways because, right. like, he's not all there even though he's not dangerous, you know? Right. But he's then, taking looking like almost possessed trees taking the uh, yeah. elements of them that already had that black tar stuff mm -hmm. coming out of it that and then turning into oil, oil. Yeah. yeah and so if right. anything he's not doing anything really incredible it's more the question is to he's harvesting the incredible stuff right he's harvesting specific trees right which yeah. Already makes you go, whoa, whoa wait, wait a mm -hmm. minute. What's well, going oil on? Oil doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> <laughs> right. That ruined the entire plot sure of Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my uh, my knowledge of uh, <laughs> geology and basic nature stuff doesn't... Well, that's not how oil works. That's not how trees work. So what's yeah. going on here? So that's but, that's that. But yeah, the, the bird being also potentially, if the beast thing is real, mm -hmm. the whole thing of something that weaves, like the songs of the four winds or something. And I'm like, that sounds like a bird. So. You know, birds going and flying around. Little, and, little songbirds. But this is, this is the thing that was the weirdest thing that, from this episode that stood out to me. Oh, yeah. It wasn't actually from the episode itself. Mm -hmm. It was from the credits. Yeah. And it was another thing that felt like major Gravity Falls vibes of like, you know, we're going to hide little clues in uh -huh. places. It was not the cast, it was the, the players. players. And there was one with a question mark, and then there was a name, mm -hmm. Beatrice. I'm guessing that's, that's the, the bird. bird. I'm guessing right? that's the bird, yeah. But like, what? And if mm -hmm. the, so would the question mark then be like the narrator? Because that was the only other voice it we heard from the episode. I think it's the narrator, right? Yeah. But then why not just say the narrator, well, right? Because the narrator's in the plot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and and what and what does the players mean? Like, is there some kind of the game of, well, of forests I think, I think going on be, or something? I think that might be the fact that Wirt specifically feels like he didn't uh, get to uh, uh, stay in drama club and has a constant <laughs> desire to go into yes. monologue. Yeah. And of course, his brother's just being a wonderful little brother, just sitting there and be like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, I'm listening. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. You keep doing your thing. I also really love how literal Gregory is, where he's mm -hmm. like, Where are we right now? We're walking through a forest. 
No, oh, yes, I know that. But <laughs> like, where? Are we? What? Well, I'm answering your questions. And, yeah, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I, 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 I love so much their dynamic and that mm-hmm. they are so different. Yes. I mean, so ridiculously different that I actually have trouble like believing they're brothers, like in a lot of ways, except for the fact that they're so quick and snappy mm-hmm. in that kind of brother way. Big sibling energy while at the same time being complete polar opposites as people. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, and also the, the the costumes just being so <clears throat> Yeah. The, so choice. <laughs> right, like the the fact that Wirt has the cape and the dunce cap. That is brilliant like because Next he's gonna fall, pull the fool tarot card out you know right but like he takes himself so seriously he's so, so neurotic you know seriously. and and like like he's got some good thought processes going on there and mm-hmm. stuff but at the same time like he's verbally processing all of it <laughs> <laughs> my man has no filter nope it's, it's this beautiful thing where i kind of see these kids as like being being sweet sweet little kids that are just just, just, just delightfully, like right on the spectrum. Just, just right there, where it's like, oh, they, yeah. they, they each have their own quirky aspects of yep. them of trying to communicate, but they're so literal in their specific ways of like, uh, in some ways, uh, Greg is the most like logical of mm-hmm. them. Oh yeah, and he keeps Greg, things very matter of fact see, and see, straight to the point. Greg has all the common sense, right? Whereas Wirt is the smart one right right like right but he's also the emotionally neurotic one versus mm-hmm. the logical like matter of fact only what's literally happening one. yes and mm-hmm. thus in some ways greg is fearless right yeah and so when spanking when, the big bad wolf you with know, the yeah. bad side of the axe and <laughs> right. then also when the barrel got destroyed and he comes into the house yeah, he's, he's like whoa <laughs> <laughs> like, right. he's so adorable but like yeah he doesn't seem scared at all when mm-hmm. he when he comes in here. Well, and, and when the wolf sticks his head in the barrel and he's like, you have beautiful eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I knocked him out. You said we were going to knock him out and make a run for it. I love also candy camouflage and yep. just like actually worked. Right. Because the dog. Oh, no, it didn't no. work. It didn't work. But I wish it had worked because the dog wanted the candy. Right. So yeah. No, the yeah. dog was just the dog was just choking on something, and, and it, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, have you ever had an instance in your childhood where a dog was chasing after you to play, but it made you think it was trying to eat your face? Like I had a lot of instances of being very scared of animals. I did too. I did um, too. Some were dogs. Some were cats. We had a cat in our own house that. <laughs> It was really sad. She got torn apart by raccoons as a kitten, so she was... um, Traumatized. Traumatized, right? And so, um, well, I very quickly got scared of her. And because, you know, she would just jump on your foot whenever you walked past her in the hallway, right? But, yeah. I wasn't looking to go so in-depth into your trauma, (laughs) Jake. I was just wondering if you've experienced that. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, the... um, the the element of having a dog chase after you though where it's like oh i don't i don't mm-hmm. know why it's chasing after me that's like a deep like fear of mine from when i was a kid as yeah. well like i i had that happen so many times well, cuz when you're small and a dog's big and, and they're fast like they're fast you can't you they, can't run if away if they wanted you dead right like, right mm. and of course they're trying to play with you so they don't ever touch you they just right. jump around you and they're like right. <laughs> or maybe even or maybe even jump onto you and then they lick your face but you're like those teeth were like real close to my face just there you know yeah <laughs> true yep. true but, also something yeah. else that i i wanted to mention that i i thought was awesome mm-hmm. i was a little worried since i knew that elijah wood was voiced one of the characters in this that i would just be hearing elijah wood mm-hmm. and not like the character right within like a minute I completely forgot that it was him. I like it, ten seconds for yeah, me. His was, voice is perfect for mm-hmm. this. Yep. Yeah. Yep. In some ways, I almost started to hear Dipper than I did when <laughs> right. I heard uh, uh, Elijah yeah. Wood. So that 
Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. But y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access. So you can chat with us in the community there about this show, about animated shows in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. We stream every weekday. The info's in the description. And so if anything that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next, next time. time.